The Audio Visio podcast is an extension of Visio Magazine, an online and print literary and arts magazine. The Audio Visio podcast is a cerebral experience where we expose and explain the visions of creative individuals. I got a microphone. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Does it sound better than last time? Hold it up again. You were so small on the screen. <laughs> it looks cool. Does it sound better? Uh, I don't. My ears are not tuned for audio differentiation their ears <laughs> no, I know, but like i don't i don't have a what good else? ear i also don't have a good palate what else I'm do like, ears do but hear unless you know they don't but then you know well yeah there's <laughs> there like there's a plus ears and there's like a minus ears and then there's like c so you're saying you got plus. like d plus c like minus ears i'd say a good a solid c yeah. So um, yeah, but they're just, they're not great. So you yeah. sound fine to me. I sound but great. This podcast is brought to you by crayons. Crayons for when you can't be trusted with ink, but you can be trusted with wax. This podcast is brought to you by the Anti Candle Coalition of Rural Northeastern Saskatchewan. Candles, small light, big risk. Candles, ouch, don't touch that. Candles, how about maybe a light bulb? Candles, the devil's crayon. Candles, burn them. Burn them with fire. Candles, tall and thin. That's stable. I mean, I uh, I am in love with your Instagram account. (laughs) It's a thing. I'm sitting here concerned that you haven't updated it today. Um, We were considering calling uh, the police if by midnight you had not reached out to us or updated your Instagram account. (laughs) Matt, tell me the but story. If by midnight it doesn't go down, like you are taking over for it for me and you I, will continue the legacy. I swear to you, we discussed whether or not I could hack your account. We really and did. I know what the photo is going to be. I could probably take over pretty seamlessly without the public knowing. Um, <laughs> but I was worried for you. <laughs> and I'm glad you're okay. What's up with the Instagram account? Well, I think, um, I guess I'm going to have to do it at some point today. I still have time. Barely. I'll throw it up a little later, maybe or something. We'll set an alarm to make sure you're out of here so you can get, get to your fans, satiate their needs. <laughs> yeah. I won't be able to sleep until I see it. Yeah. I mean, one eye will be open. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what is it? Your, your Instagram account is what? Like a perpetual throwback Thursday? Yeah. It's like a, a throwback Thursday machine, I guess. When did it start? Um, I think it was in like December of seven years ago. I don't know, eight, <laughs> seven. So it probably would have been 2013 or 14. And um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I started the Instagram thing in about, you know, seven years ago, seven, whatever. And uh, and it started as kind of a, like at the time, like Throwback Thursday was kind of new and social media. And like, I know social media is kind of like a self-indulgent thing by definition and stuff. But uh, I just didn't have, have old pictures or throwback Thursday and everyone's scanning their old baby pictures and putting them up. And so I just took uh, a screenshot of my Instagram. So it shows the last nine boxes. So it showed, you know, all the last nine pictures or posts I put up and then I put that up. So they all went to the side and it was technically, I guess, a throwback. It was just a silly joke or whatever, but yeah, it yeah. was my throwback Thursday to my old stuff or uh, last pictures. Yeah, and then um, um, and then I just then the, another week came in. It was Thursday again, and I hadn't posted anything. And I was like, maybe I should just do that again. And <laughs> I screenshotted it, and then that square I posted, and that square goes up. So then it was, I, and then I just couldn't stop. So it kind of looked cool for a bit, and now it's just this gray grid mess. Yeah, I would assume for a while it kind of almost looked like a tunnel or a spiral, or almost like something like an illusion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't know it was gonna what it was gonna like. I was just being a jerk mostly. <laughs> yeah, but, I was good. Yeah, but yeah, but then I kept going and like I couldn't, I couldn't stop because uh, then it turned into like a, a joke a little bit. Precisely. And and, uh, and then people, some friends liked like, but you know now there's friends of mine who enjoy when it comes and they say they're happy and then obviously other people. Other friends have literally said, I hate you. Yeah. 
<laughs> my baby pictures are so far out. It would have taken me into, I don't have a scanner. Like it's a whole thing, you know? So this is a better throwback, I think. But then people people sometimes will follow me or I'll follow, you know, or whatever. And and I just like Im- immediately want to apologize to them, you know, and go like, I'm so, so, I don't know what you came here for, but like, this is probably <laughs> not it. I don't know. Even if I wasn't doing this, I probably don't have much to offer, but. Would you, know. you ever... Would you ever consider making like a story in one of your highlights that's just simply explaining your page for when people come onto your page? Or do you want to keep it kind of this unspoken joke? Sometimes people will like, will message me. Like I, it's a few, like a couple of times someone, people have gone like, I thought my phone was broken. And you know, and then I'll have to explain it. And sometimes I'll post like an old one. Cause I, I don't, I don't know if I want, if I can really, like I'll explain it to you guys and this is fun and stuff, but sometimes I'll post like an old one that kind of shows a little of the start and hopefully people could go and like put it together. But that may be a little too much work for anyone. It is a deep scroll to the start. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend that. Like if you do that, I appreciate it, but, but uh, I definitely <laughs> I did. I'm not going to tell anyone to do that. <laughs> yeah. I did. I wanted oh, to really? figure it out. I had to ice uh, my phone. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you got to the bottom of it. It's a long now. I don't know. There's like 300 or 400 in or something. Yeah, 384. Yeah, there's a lot. Today's 385. <laughs> I did the. I checked for you. Today's 385. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. You're very close to 400. Are you going to celebrate? Um, we we can celebrate if you like. We can <laughs> yeah. You could be there when I send it out. Or oh man. Or I'll I'll send it to you and we can run it by like the proof the proof it you know. That sounds yeah. 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 Watch Matt run out and go get a cupcake. <laughs> I will be wearing a party when hat. It's like set, like it'll be on the year or something, because then you, if it's like six years or seven years, then it's like can kind of show how little I've come or how little <laughs> memories I have. Yeah. But it's exciting. But it's it's crazy to think that I've been doing it for that long, you know. Yeah, of course. <laughs> how have you been feeling doing comedy in COVID? times i've been hearing phrases dumpster shows i've been hearing plexiglass barriers all these words that just make it sound (laughs) so surreal so but i would kind of say that like right i really just started during covid and it's all i know or whatever so right now yeah like um the dumpster shows were were really cool like uh my friends uh dylan parker and jeff davis run uh a weekly comedy night at Poor Boy. And uh, there was an alley in Poor Boy and in the last fall um, when I think we were getting shut out of, we weren't allowed inside or, or anything like that. So they just, uh, I think the, the bar was also setting up like a little alley patio and trying to work as a lot of places were. Yeah. At our, um, so then I guess they just kind of were like, let's, let's keep it going. Let's, uh, let's keep this, their Thursday night, poor boy comedy, uh, Mike there, let's keep it going. And I remember, um, we went around and asked permission of the people eating or drinking, like if we, cause they were all hanging out like dates on a Friday night or Thursday night. And then like, we're going to get up and start yelling jokes or whatever, you know? <laughs> so I know that we were, so we asked and, and stuff and everyone was like, people there were cool. And then. I don't know the dumpster shows were special because like a lot of different stuff was happening it was weird it was special like the dumpster shows don't necessarily have great acoustics <laughs> no but they have great dumpsters <laughs> oh okay okay they have better dumpsters than the average <laughs> club perhaps we don't, it's not called an acoustic show <laughs> sometimes it was just comics it was freezing they had the heat you know uh those are really cool um the plexiglass is kind of a weird one that they've had in the clubs in front of the stage, uh, different places have different plexiglass, but um, I guess it's like a law or a legal kind of restriction or whatever, I don't know. But that one's weird because you get up and because of the lighting, a lot of time, it's just a, a box of mirrors, you know, it's just, a, you only see yourself and no audience <laughs> and stuff, you know? And so you're just kind of in these mirrors and I'm just like, oh, well, you know, I don't know if I need to be, just looking at myself right now, you know, yeah. it kind of is a, weird... like a good setup if you laugh at your own jokes. But yeah. If you don't, yeah, I've, then, heard, I've yeah, heard my jokes just... enough. You know? <laughs> I could, I could just go and do it in the, I'm sure, you know, I'll do it in the mirror at home. But, <laughs> but uh, and also the, the plexiglass kind of, um, it's hard to hear the audience sometimes. 
Mm. So like you get, you, sometimes I'll get off thinking I didn't do well and, you know, I'll record my set or something and then uh, not want to hear my set because I'm like, ah, oh, you know, that was a really bad experience. And I did that, you know, so I'll just like hesitate. And then finally, when I listen to it, uh, there'll be actually more reaction than I thought there was. And I'll be like, oh, I don't have to quit comedy forever now. So I don't, I don't perform anything live right now. Is the plexiglass only in front of you or does it go on the sides as well? Are you uh, watching a hockey game or are you in a penalty box? <laughs> you, uh, you can, I think it depends where uh, it's different in, in a lot of places. Like some places just have one kind of hanging down thing. Um, like Yuck Yucks, Yuck Yucks has it on like, that has three, you know, like one and then on each side. Um, I think Absolute does too. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you could you could be right in it in like, or, you know, there's just maybe they just have one kind of dropped in front of you. You got, you got to do a, a microphone switch too sometimes. And that can um, really throw you off where you're just like, call your name and you get up there and now you spend the next 10 minutes trying to plug the thing in or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I really have lost some momentum doing that before. <laughs> I, I don't know. You saw the world. There was no live music or art or, you know, everybody's taking a hit. And yep. the fact that we were mm -hmm. still able to keep jokes Keep you jokes. Know, and all that kind of live people doing some stuff, you know. Yeah, that's what the people need. You got to bring the people laughter in times where, you know, it's hard to find, hard pressed. Yeah. And you were DJing before you were doing comedy? Mm. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I've been DJing for, I was DJing for about, I think I started, uh, you know, I was DJing for about 15 years and um, oh, wow. I would do a couple monthly shows in Ottawa and then a uh, weekly one in Kingston. And um, I stopped obviously because of the pandemic. I've been, it's funny cause I've been fired from almost every job I've ever had, <laughs> uh, but uh, I've never been fired by Let's the brush world. Past that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I was fired from Earth and I've never, <laughs> that was a new one for me, you know? But uh, so yeah, I just stopped DJing and peace because dancing was outlawed and we all know whatever. Um, but yeah, I would do it. I I, I did kind of like '60s music, '60s soul, Motown, um, uh, that like you know old 45s, and then I did also like indie parties. So you know like Tame Impala and LCD Sound System, MGMT, The Strokes. And then there was like an alternative bar in Ottawa that I used to go to and I, I DJed at for a while and that closed down. So I was just kind of keeping that alive a little bit, some of that music. Cause you can't, you can go anywhere and listen to Justin Bieber or, you know, everything. And, you know, I'm sure it's enjoyable or whatever, but like, I don't know, you can't always go to a place and dance to MIA or, or I don't know. Tame Yellow Pop. sub sorry yeah yeah a yellow submarine with a four on the floor like <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah that's that's niche so <laughs> i'm just thinking out loud here could you could a comedy club be open without a comic because i know like that is like one of those weird things for some reason you can't do comedy at a restaurant um like it makes it not okay uh but if they had a patio could you stand on the other side of the patio or like on the street and do a comedy show for a comedy club off i mean property i don't know i mean the rule i don't know what the rules are like i i, I assume i could do that because i could go out on the street and tell my stupid jokes anytime i guess but um <laughs> I, I think like i there's some kind of weird rules about the performance stuff, I think. You know, like you maybe couldn't have a band up there, but you can have one guy. Or like if you have two people doing stand up, they have to both wear masks. But if it's one person, they don't. But I'm not sure how, how, how it works with it. Cause I've, there's restaurants here that do it like when we're open. We're not open at all, you know? So um, like Meow That's Hot and Eddie's Diner and those, there's a few restaurants that were doing it the whole time. They just maybe had to do the plexiglass thing and, you know, right, right, right. masks when you walk up or what. I'm so confused. I mean, I know everyone is. And uh, I just like, I'm just walking around a lot of times going like, I don't know if this is allowed. Like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> like, 
I'm just always confused in general. Yeah. So then when they start throwing more confusion, I, I just can't do it, you know? I hear you. The strangest thing is seeing people walk up to a table with a mask, sit down, and then all of a sudden the world's be like, it's just, there's no COVID. And as soon as you sit with food in front of you, you can take your mask off and germs don't count. It's the craziest thing to witness. Just if you stare yeah. back at it from a bird's eye view, just in general. <laughs> Chew with your mouth open. And then you put your mask back on and then the pandemic is all of a sudden a thing. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. who, who? We're living. If if the world, if you didn't think it was already VR, it is now. Because that, what kind of glitch is that? <laughs> yeah. Do you believe in simulation theory, Emmett? Um, <clears throat> that was an interesting one. I guess I don't, I, I, I don't know if I, I, I guess I could believe in it. I'm yeah. kind of more with like life stuff. I'm more of like a let's cross that bridge when we get to it kind of thing, you know, so. I'm more about life. <laughs> I, I feel, yeah, like I'm I like living. I, I I have to you know a lot to to hang out and talk about here and stuff. So I don't know. Like I, I'm not gonna be right about anything. You know, I, like <laughs> no matter what happens at the end, like it's not. I'm not gonna be the one. Like you know, I think of, of opinions and life stuff and everything, and then sometimes I just realize, like uh, you know, in my whole entire life, no one's kick down my door and ask my two cents on anything that I, you know, so I'm just like, ah, I don't really need to know much. It's just around the corner though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll be kicking your door down. Right now, but and now you're going to be ill prepared and embarrassed. And... <laughs> but I'm, I'm the last one anyone wants to know their, their <laughs> opinions and anything. I'm not going to know. And that's so actually... what do, you, do you believe in sim? Do, I mean, I guess that's a popular one these days. That makes sense. I, I have no idea. I don't, I don't presume to know or even, yeah, I'm, I honestly, I'm like you, I don't care. <laughs> like it, it won't change the way I, I can live. So who knows? Maybe. Yeah. Because a lot of the people who do believe in simulation don't have that mentality. Sure. And, I, right. So if you already are of the mentality where it doesn't like it matter or it can't be anything else, but, but if you're of an understanding or of a different mindset, it could be all you understand or all how you see the world and you can't see it any differently. So it's very interesting to see the two frames of thought and the ideologies that see who wins out. I do yeah. worry about the, the going crazy and not knowing it versus, you know. It seems ambitious to presume to know. Precisely. But, yeah, I didn't have that kind of arrogance at all. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, how am I supposed to know? <laughs> <laughs> because even if we're considering that the world might be virtual reality, virtual reality, I would assume, is still a man made concept. And it's still oh, within yeah. the kind confines of language, which was also created by man. So if the world was to be anything, why would the world be something that only humans can think of? Because we're arrogant, because we need this world to make sense by our own definition, because if we say VR, it sounds more familiar to us and then we can make sense of it. But I believe that um, if that's just air, kind of a little arrogant, and if anything that the world can be, I think is going to be understood beyond human capability of understanding beyond our boundaries something that is out of reach that's what it is it can be vr for us because it makes sense because we know what virtual reality is and then we can attach definition and meaning to it but again it's all you know we wake up in the morning and you can choose to believe in vr or you can eat breakfast so <laughs> you can just cannot do both or live your life or not do neither but there's theories that we're living in a simulation, like life is a video game. I totally get it because I'm really bad at video games. <laughs> Whoever's controlling my sim is an awful gamer. Whoever's controlling my sim is an awful gamer. <laughs> I've made some poor gaming decisions. I was thinking how I want to go to um, Six Flags and like open up a Seven Flags right next door <laughs> you just like price <laughs> rules we're not as good as six flags but there's more flags we got one more flag and 
you're going to notice that difference. If you're here for the flags, you'll appreciate us. Yeah. If you're here for, you're the, here for the roller coasters, go elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, fuck off. You know they only have six flags, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> they add a seventh flag and the whole thing just disappears into the fourth dimension. <laughs> they can't even afford a seventh flag. Yeah. <laughs> I think they can afford health and safety checks. <laughs> yeah, right. I do want to yeah, open, open a seven flags and just like, the cost of a mission will be a million dollars. And like, all I need is just one person to show up. <laughs> <laughs> just one for the media to know for that For that seventh flag, like, <laughs> I guarantee you, that seventh flag is worth the million. <laughs> yeah, if you're obscure enough with what you're offering at seven flags, you could sell that very first ticket ever for a million dollars and never sell another. <laughs> yeah. <It's laughs> you like think six they, flags is great. They put boards. Uh, around construction sites or whatever like they're, they're making a condo right outside my building and I was looking out there and they have like wood around the thing but like it's only this tall like you're gonna see it and then some and then there's like a little hole and I saw some like old people going and looking through the hole watching oh, no. the building and I was just like don't do that I was like haven't you seen this already like didn't what are you looking for? I mean, but I'm standing up here watching the same thing, I guess. So They're I looking for a show. I definitely believe that comedy and comedians, rather, are modern day philosophers. And I know that you yourself have said, like, I'm not really about, you know, pushing down a too poignant of a message. You just want to, like, look at 90 Day Fiance and go, what is that? But <laughs> I've never seen it. I said it sounds it's. It seems pretty interesting. It sounds fun, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that made me laugh. I couldn't. I couldn't. I, I couldn't. I died. I'm like, who thinks of that? Who? Like, I would have never taken the title of that show and thought of... of <laughs> I don't want to... uh, I'm glad you liked it. Thank you. Three months old, getting getting married. What's up with that? <laughs> that was beautiful. But um, also... I stand by that. You should. Everyone's watching 90 Day Fiance, but I haven't seen it because I don't think three month old should be getting married. <laughs> Even though you don't really see yourself as someone with like the delirious Eddie Murphy style of, of delivery. I have the outfit. It just doesn't fit. <laughs> That's good. That's good enough. <laughs> If any, do you have a vision when you come to your computer, your laptop, your mixing board, or when you come to the blank page, do you come to it with a vision, with an idea, or with an intent that then allows you to execute something that has continuity throughout all your projects? So for example, at the beginning of one of Tom Segura's um, stand-up set for Netflix, you know how they always film a little intro? He's joking. But there's truth in his jest where he's walking around, you know, New York City and he's talking about, I just sit at a coffee shop and I stare because in those moments, in the nuance, like, and he's talking about in the silence, in the in-between, in the weird things that are happening in his city, like he's making a joke out of it, but he's explaining his process. He's explaining what his mind is going through before he gets on that stage and delivers what he has thought of to us. And it's a similar practice throughout that allows what he says on stage to have similar um, thought and continuity throughout it with all his sets. There's growth and there's improvement, but there's continuity, a common denominator. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess I do. I'm going to have... Um maybe like accidental like that because I'm just I'm gonna say stuff that I like or that I care about or like um they're gonna it's gonna appeal to me it's like I think it's that I these are these are things that I like and joke about like I don't I'm if I'm not gonna go out there and say an opinion or a joke that I don't like or believe in or whatever just because it gets laughs or whatever i'm not saying never like my stuff doesn't necessarily have big changing the world stuff or anything like that but like um but i like it i guess you that's know, good just, enough yeah um yeah so i i i, I when i start if i go right it's it's going to be uh, 
my my opinions or with things or my uh, confusion with the world, I guess. Of course. I want to know what your fantasy uh, uh, introduction is when you're coming on stage. I've actually, just to add to this, uh, I've heard that the comedian's worst nightmare is when they say, and here comes the funniest person you'll ever hear. And they're like, oh no, you ruined it. <laughs> like, is, is that kind of a nightmare um, to kind of go along with your fantasy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I mean, you know, the person who's hosting is often hosting because they're good at hosting and I'll let them figure it out and I, you know, trust them. But I've, def <laughs> I've definitely sat there while someone has said that, you know that like you said it's like, oh here comes a great you know the best ever or something and then uh, uh you know i'm not that they're calling me the best ever, but like yeah i worry about overhyping and then but that's yeah. the thing right because then the audience is like okay come on best thing ever show me what you got <laughs> <laughs> yeah and they're sitting there like arms crossed going he's really really good but best i don't know <laughs> right and then you also get the people in the audience that don't know about your stand-up so they come and then they're expecting something else and it's like have you ever listened to my bit i found kind of after the last lockdown or like one of the recent ones or whatever you know like uh, i can't i don't i'm not good at <laughs> but Blur. um the audience has seemed kind of a little off a little but i don't know you know like comedians are gonna say like no bad audiences and stuff but I feel they're gonna say that they they're gonna say that when we're not talking about the apocalypse and pandemics and stuff, you know, like so I find that a lot of people these days maybe and this is just a theory, and you know, I've been said wrong and right by other comics and stuff, but um I think a lot of people are coming and they're you know, they've been in, locked in their house. There's some people are sad. Like I know that last lockdown was tough on everyone in one way or another. And people come out and they probably are like, I'm risking my life to come out and get laughs <laughs> because it's sad. Or, you know, obviously people just are going out because they don't care or aren't scared. But either way, I think there's even more expectations because now you have to really be, I, I almost, I feel like they're listening the people want like energy and positivity and enthusiasm. Yeah. And I get it. I totally get it. But I'm, I'm, I'm none of those things, you know, I guess I'm <laughs> kind of positive. So, you know, I'm optimistic, but like, I don't, I'm not like a, yeah, yeah, guy. Like there's, <laughs> there's comics in Ottawa who do it really well and stuff, you know? So yeah, it's tough these days when, <laughs> when I go to some of the shows and uh, I feel like, Oh, the, you know, maybe we're a little less energy than, the people need right now you know? well some people are looking for that bombastic energy to kind of cut through the mediocrity but there are a lot of people who respect and appreciate uh the opposite of bombastic and <laughs> and get it, you know that, that energy and it's appreciated and it's necessary no matter what vessel it's contained in the act yeah, of giving your service is is needed Oh, and there's a super beautiful side to like drier comedy. And that's, I think that's important to note, right? You've got this uh, really silly, long-term, deep, deep bit uh, for Instagram. This uh, this insane, ridiculous, absurd commitment to silliness. I think someone um, wishes they thought of it themselves. <laughs> yeah, not, no one asked you. And uh, But then on stage, you've got uh, a very quick sort of one-liner kind of delivery um, I, I recall the joke that made me laugh hysterically. It had to do with uh, ghost hunting shows. Um, Watch a lot of ghost hunting shows, but I think if they ever caught anything, it'd be called the news. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's a very different, um, different like two. You have very two very different sides to the way you're doing comedic things. Um, can you talk about your style a little bit and or the influences that brought you to to like the kind of comedy that you like to do yeah, yeah um i guess like growing up i was i i i really liked um like i was always watching comedy like i i grew up watching david letterman since i was a kid so like you know he had kind of absurdities and you know 
he also did quick jokes and that kind of stuff, you know, so they could just stand up or talk show, you know, and start with a monologue and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then at that time, there was probably more quick jokes and, you know, Roddy Dangerfield or whatever. But then um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. I think it all is just kind of, I'm, I don't know, it's just, I guess it's just one of those things where people, I just don't have it in me to take like stuff super serious. Yep. A lot, you know? <laughs> Like, yep. I just don't take myself that serious or life or the world or whatever, because it's just, like we said before, who knows what it is, you know, so I can, <laughs> we're not going to put all everything on this, you know, it's just, I just, you know, uh, but, but then like in the, I think in the, in the nineties, when I really start, you know, you'd watch like, I would always be watching like the show stand up on TV or whatever. And that always interests me, even if it was bad, I would still like watch and see like, you know, you still want to watch, like, you kind of like watching Saturday Night Live, you know, like, it sucks, but yeah, you kind of want to see what's going on, and you want to see what the jokes are, and stuff like that, you know, yeah, um, but then, like, I think in the 90s, I was really into, like, I guess they would call it like, the alternative scene that was starting, so I was, like, a, my favorite are, like, Janine Garofalo and, like, Andy Kindler, yes, um, I loved, like, uh, like, I, Bob Odenkirk, Mr. Show, like, I've loved him for a, like since the '90s and David Cross and stuff. Their stand up and everything. Even though Bob Odenkirk, he did a, a bit of stand up that people I don't know if ever really saw or ever was really cool. He's so it's like if your history teacher was doing stand up, it's like just stick to Better Call Saul, sweetie. <laughs> just <laughs> like he's good, but he's really good with David Cross. Like David Cross really brings out. Odin Kirk like really brings him out of his shell I find sorry but yeah I just I love them yeah I think they came like I mean that was probably one of the ways Mr. Show works so well you know because yeah. David Cross came from like stand up and his stuff and then Bob who was like a writer and, and uh, yeah. you know doing all that stuff so it was it was kind of almost felt like David Cross was the, the wilder one but and like you know, Bob Odenkirk sure. knew the rules, but was breaking them, you know, so together they kind of worked out well. Really well. Shout out to uh, Lorenzo Patino and Embarrassing Humans. Yes. We've been watching Mr. Show and commenting on it uh, over the last couple of weeks or whatever. And then uh, I guess with the short, the, we were talking, the short jokes, I just kind of, that was just how I always wrote. Like I would write jokes when I was not to show anymore but I was I would write jokes when I was a teenager and stuff like that that were always you know I'm sometimes you just want to make it a silly joke or something but sometimes I want a little bit you know you, you say something and I just want to say it in the shortest I can yeah you know? yeah. yeah I don't I don't have it in me to like tell a big story about a joke or something like that like I would love to I love uh storytellers a lot and stuff like that yeah. but um and I wish I could do that, but yeah, I get to <laughs> write them real quick. Get to that. I don't write them quick. Sometimes I write them. It takes a second, but but yeah, I write quick jokes. Have you ever? Like been... Andy Kaufman was a big one. I liked him when I was younger too. I, still I see that him. influence in the Instagram for sure. Uh, and I uh, before the podcast, I watched that that set that Adriana sent me um uh on my phone with my girlfriend and this is uh the most supreme of compliments she said you, you remind her of Hedberg uh but not like hack you know like not like you're not stealing his cadence or his you know like he had a, a thing uh that I think a lot of people stole uh yeah. not in that way but just like those quick one-liners that are they're spot on they're the economy of words is you know mint and uh I would be flattered uh if she said that about me and she is not um that's so that, yeah. that's something i was actually going to mention i wrote that down when i was watching your stand-up i said you are able to take that similar delivery but make it your own which is really really admirable and that's something that's definitely palatable do you kind of get frustrated that you get compared to hedberg a lot because yeah i mean i, I he's the king of one-liners I, I, I love him obviously you know how can you not and 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 shout out to your thank you your girlfriend Matt she sounds cool you know, like, I'm glad she enjoyed hey, you cut that out <laughs> um but yeah I yeah I like I it, it, I guess it just makes me like I, I get it because you know short jokes that's what 
but then it makes me like I I I'm I purposely make sure I'm not doing that exactly what, what he does now, which is probably a, a good thing because you could be trying to do someone for so long and maybe people would like it and keep going, but like it makes me probably easier for me to find out my own style and stuff. You know, yeah. when I, I go, oh no, that's too much like this or it sounds like that. Like I'm, you know. And as an enormous Hedberg fan myself, you it's not fair to give him the whole genre of one-liners. No, precisely. You know, like, you're not you're not doing Hedberg. <clears throat> because it's you're not. No. Yeah, there's been so many like like I mean like I said R- Roddy Dangerfield and yeah. right and yep. other people you can sometimes people are doing one liners you don't really notice it, you know. Carrot, Carrot top. Carrot top, sure. It was top. one-liners with props, but it was one-liners. College favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because to be met because Mitch Mitch was Mitch because of his pain, because of his he couldn't see on stage because he had such bad stage fright. He couldn't take off his sunglasses. Mitch was putting his hair in front of his face because he was nervous. It was him if he if he wanted to and would have preferred doing his sets with his back to the people because he just wanted to get it out. And so even if you wanted to be, you couldn't. Even if anyone wanted to be, you couldn't because he and you're able to make it your own. That's what he was able to do because that's what, that was his voice. And so the yeah. style of, of one-liners is simply just a stencil and how you fill it in is how you see the world, how you can simplify things and how each individual per person can simplify the comedy and the structure and the rubric that creates the final result that's all based on your own experience, upbringings, biases. And so you can't be like someone else, even though you're sharing the similar education or the stencil of a one-liner. And, 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 and so that's why when I watch your stuff, I definitely can pick up your voice, how you see things. And it, it varies. I, I totally agree. Like, it's like, um, if you are being yourself and natural and honest, then that's going to be your point of view and no yeah. one can replicate that. So you, no. you're telling jokes that are coming from pure you, if hopefully, you know, I mean, you can have characters and blah, blah, blah. But yeah. um, when it comes to simple jokes like that, like eventually it's going to be in a picture of someone if they're doing it for themselves. And, and that's kind of me. like, I, I'll always want to tell jokes and go and, and uh, do stand up and everything like this is, well you know I don't it's not a stepping stone it's it's all I want to do it's my passion or whatever you know and I would be okay doing it to 10 people for the rest of my life or like I don't need I'm not looking for bigger or better or to get my stuff out there I just I want to create and just Got it. and just do it you know it. so I kind of accomplished everything but I'll keep going like not accomplished everything but I'm I'm just satisfied and happy but um I will always keep doing it no matter what so when you say you're satisf- satisfied, you say you're happy, we pull out a list. We have everything that makes Emmett satisfied and happy. There's check marks. Mm-hmm. What's on that list? What solidifies that sense of accomplishment? Yes. Matt's got the paper out. Have the list. He has the list. Yeah, let me get a pen. I don't know. Here, I'm going to mime a pen. <laughs> just uh, <laughs> just, just, create, just creating stuff uh, that, that, uh, that I like. You know, so that what, I can I can share with other people or just enjoy it myself, you know. They did a class out of um uh absolute here and um a, f- a friend of mine got me uh like tickets or whatever for, for it and I was it was kind of like I used to kind of just get up on it because I was just nervous. Like you're talking about the Mitch Hedberg with the sunglasses, like I wish I could wear sunglasses. You know, I wish I could do. I I, I wouldn't because he did, it and also like I probably wouldn't. It wouldn't be cool. Or whatever, Nobody's but. done a welder's mask yet. <laughs> Take that one. That's the new, my new character. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So so I guess I was just kind of u- using it as a a way to get for stage fright. You know, which which kind of helped. Um, it was like a class, a class that they kind of taught you how to get up, and then they would talk about people with their jokes, and kind of, you know, it was run by a guy who was 
who's been doing it forever. So he had some advice and stuff, but my, I, I don't know. I feel, I feel hard. It's hard to talk about because like, I didn't, I don't want to be like, yeah, I showed up prepared for, for it or whatever. But like, I, I really just kind of went up and told my jokes. Okay. And so it was, it was more like a workshop than a I was comedy say, class. Yeah. Yeah. It was a workshop. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, um, I guess it can help. It probably helps. It helps some people. I think it has helped. I've known people. It helps. Um, Did it help you at all? For different reasons, I guess. Um, but yeah, I kind of, it kind of, I kind of just use it as a way to get on stage. Uh, yep. Something for the resume. <laughs> well, no, just for nerve, just for nerves. Like and I, just, nerves. I was yeah. just so nervous to get up there and stuff. So I was just like, oh, okay, well, so like every, they would, you would do it in front of the people in the class. So we're all there doing it together. Yeah. So, and, and I would say like, I don't, I don't want, I don't know. I guess it works for some people, but like, it's probably better just to go to an open mic and just go up and do it. I don't know. I don't want to say good or bad about it, you know, but, uh, yeah. but he, like, I, like now you're, I'm just doing the same thing at open mic with friends that are comedians. So we're all kind of just encouraging each other there and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it's comfortable in that, that sense, I guess. It's a good stepping stone if you need it to kind of give you that push, get the, get out of the nest kind of thing. <laughs> dip your toes in the water yeah i uh the the classic way that i understand comedians in a comedy club to be is cold to the person on stage to preserve their own sense of of funniness um do you find that to be true or are comedians supportive and like do they laugh easily um oh yeah i find uh, i find that uh, um I did kind of you know I kind of went in thinking like, oh comedians you know they're maybe I'm gonna be yeah like you said cold or maybe you know who knows you know every, but uh the, I don't know I don't know if it's like this ever but like Ottawa's scene is really cool for that like I don't know most of the people I've met have been really supportive and they're supportive of each other and Ottawa also has like a really good scene. I'm surprised, like getting into it, I'm surprised how many really funny people are here that like, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it's just, I, I, everyone's been really cool to me and um, I've been really grateful. I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of grateful to be a part of com- like doing comedy and be a part of the scene or whatever, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm just always kind of have that with me where I'm just happy to be there. So I can't, you know. That's a really good attitude to have. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm doing what I, I like to do. So I can't be too upset about that, you know. Yeah, I can't, I can't get mad at that. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, what voice is with you when you get up on stage? You know, your name is called, you know, Emmett Morrison's coming to the stage and you, you hear that, you get out of your seat, you're walking up. What's, what's going through your head in, in that journey? What's your voice I, telling you? I find that like I'm, I'm, st- I still get nervous and stuff, and I find that I'm nervous up until I get on the stage, and then when I'm on the stage, I'm just up there, like I don't, you know, I'm just doing the stuff or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think sometimes it was tough to to do. They'll call your name, and then you go up, and like during these times, or you know, I'm sure this happens all the times where there's only three people in the audience or one person there or blah 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 yeah so sometimes you know you got to kind of just tell tell yourself like uh to kind of just like i would i would want i would be up there and and if i'm just doing it to an empty room or something like my instinct is just like i I just want to leave like i just want to get off stage (laughs) right now like through the whole time i'm like i I'm just like I'm skipping over jokes and I'm just trying trying to go, go through it <laughs> yeah. because it's a nightmare. Yeah. Um, but then I I start I start you know I kind of go like well, that's just pointless. Like all it's about getting up there and staying up there, you know. So once I went up to know like I'm gonna be up there, it may not be the best reactions, you know. Yeah. Then. I, like that helped me kind of go like I'm standing up here and I'm gonna do 
my best or whatever and take my time and not rush through stuff uh, just because there's no one in the audience or whatever, you know? Like Precisely. You don't want it, that to affect the quality of your comedy. Yeah, so, because you, you just don't, you don't really, like, I don't get anything out of it. Um, so now, like, it's it's kind of cool because then I think if you go up and you're, you're all right doing it in front of an empty room and one person or two people or whatever, then it's like, I don't know, then it just is like standing your ground in all scenarios. You can, you're just comfortable on stage more. And I, I kind of looked at it more because I can make some of my jokes at home and then go and deliver them. But like the stage comfort and how I feel up there, I can't replicate, you know. It's, yeah. it's interesting too. I, I tr- like just made this connection in the moment. Uh, I, I've heard that, well, it's certainly true that comedy is a craft that requires feedback um to know if you're writing well you, you mm. can't do it really without an audience to to give you a sense of, of you know your success but djing is similar in that way it's not um like uh creating a original music in the way that like you can put that out in sales or whatever like you you're reacting to a crowd in the way that they're experiencing what you're doing with music and the same thing is true with with comedy yeah. So I can imagine DJing to a crowd of one would be pretty terrible also. Um, it's a very there... good point. It makes both of them are a lot harder when there's le- like it's a less of a night or whatever. And yeah, so like I've done I've done that where there's only been one person in the bar and I'm DJing to that person and stuff like that. And that that's a long night. <laughs> and sure. at that point. So I've been to, do you know Electric Circuits, the music festival here in Kingston? I've heard of it. Um, I don't know too much about it, though. When does that happen? It happens every spring, but not anymore because of COVID. It happens every spring um, through the university. So it's kind of like an academic rave. It's really weird. Like people are there, but they don't really know what they're doing because it's Kingston. (laughs) So, but uh, not a lot of people show up. And if they do, they're standing. And so at that point, it kind of, you almost have to tap into an unspoken synergy or an unspoken desire. And you have to really hope that there's one person in the audience that doesn't care and get things and just gets them going, whether you pay them (laughs) (laughs) or they're a dedicated fan. At that point, you're really relying on synergy, Um, which, you know, I always try to make happen. I always try to be that person in the room where like, hey, is the, is the energy low? Like, let's get this thing going. Do you think the history of DJing helped prepare you for a comedy or was it like a wholly different thing? I think, I think maybe like, um, maybe just like the social aspect, I guess, you know, like it's, it's easier to kind of, um, I don't know, just get along with people or the audience or the other comedians and stuff, you know, because I've just been at the bars doing this already, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm always like, I think there's a lot of like, like I'm kind of like, the thing The thing with DJing, it just kind of like, it just took a lot out of me, I think, you know, like, because you're just, you're the, it's late nights. It's, late nights, drinking, like yeah. all that, like I just, yeah it's, it's too much you know like that i know drinking comes with comedy sometimes and people will s- hang out and have you know but it doesn't it's not what it's about or whatever <laughs> but like you're just djing you're there four hours dr- everyone's drinking around you know it's like that kind of stuff you know but comedy you can go do your thing and leave or whatever you know or, yeah you're more in control of the structure of it yeah yeah you're not so much held hostage <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah up on your and booth it, and it's create like i didn't one of the things about DJing is I didn't like, like I said, I'm not a good, I'm, I'm not really like a good DJ. Like I could pick some good songs to play and stuff, I think, but they were always other people's songs. Like it wasn't yeah. my stuff, you know? So I just, I didn't feel the creativity. Like there are DJs who I know who are very creative playing other people's songs and stuff, but like, I didn't really do that. And, and if I was going to be creative, like it's not my passion or dream. Like I love DJing and I'm, I'm always grateful for people coming to DJ or coming to comedy. Like that's a big one that crosses over where anyone who comes to anything I'm doing, like I'm forever yeah. grateful and very appreciative. But yeah. uh, 
uh, an interesting art question. Do you do you um, work hard and chisel away at a thing until you have a funny bit, or do you steal inspiration from the universe and and grab a funny thing that's hanging in an invisible mm -hmm. apple tree and take it and make it your own? Or do you wait for it to fall on you like Newton? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like, you know, I like wait, waiting. I find that sometimes that has probably been my most success, but I, I also don't want to just like sit, sit and, and wait sometimes, you know, so sometimes I'll like, I like writing no matter what, like I can, I'll, I'll write other stuff or I'm always trying to write. So sometimes <clears throat> I'll get down and try and write about something that I'm like, ah, like, let's really think about this one. But Often my laziness of just waiting helps a lot, I guess, you know, but, but I'll definitely like, there's, there's stuff that I go, oh, this is weird or funny or silly or whatever. And I just can't really do it. So I'll just put it aside and yeah. hopefully go for a walk and maybe, uh, you know, I'll go through an old no notebook sometimes from a few years ago and yeah. with different eyes and, and find something sometimes, you know. I sometimes have things where I'm just like, I'm taking all my notebooks and just burning them in a garbage oh. can or something. And just that's it, start fresh or whatever. But um, but sometimes I'll go back and go like, oh, this was actually could could be something, I guess. Yeah, turning those molehills into mountains. I think one of the things that's weird is during this, the COVID stuff where like, it's hard to gauge audiences react and like matt was saying we all kind of know about like comedy and need the audience to go ah oh, that's a good one sometimes you know or whatever and so there's some jokes where i just have right now where i'm waiting to use when stuff opens up because i'm not because they've gotten a little reaction but sometimes not and you know so i'm i, I kind of like i'm like well i can't do anything with these right now at all like so i'm just gonna wait until I, there's maybe I'll see more people in a room and try it, and, you know. Yeah, yeah. Matt was mentioning the importance of feedback, and that's that's something that you you need. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's jokes that I I love that I've told that, like I still love that didn't work, and I just like just like ah. Do you keep telling those jokes? Well, well those are some love that ones get... I guess that I'm gonna try, but uh, some I've scrapped, and also I mean. Sometimes with me, I just, I just get, I'm just like, oh, I'm just over this joke. Sure. <laughs> you know, I know yeah. like, it's it, good to keep them or whatever, but like, I'm just like, I don't even know what I was going for, but this one anymore. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Much like a lot of my past journal entries, which really aren't even supposed to be like anything. It's just like, where was I in? What was my mindset? Yeah, it's Why a beautiful time capsule, whether it's. Yeah useful as an art piece or not it's nice to have matt is there anything else you wanted to mention or bring up or discuss no i just want to hear one more time about the the other podcasts you've been on the yeah the that's Mr. What Show one yeah. what's that oh, one called right again? yeah and embarrassing stories that's yeah i wanted to embarrassing uh or is it is embarrassed humans oh. embarrassing humans em embarrassing humans. yeah embarrassing humans uh, <laughs> sorry yes yes so okay so yeah there's uh, this is uh there's so there's a, a a talk show that's been going on since the start of the pandemic by a com comedian called uh, named trevor thompson and he does it with uh lorenzo patino and tavis tavis mapleston and uh they do it on tuesdays and fridays and they just uh um it's it's the only show i really watch and it's it starts with uh, Trevor, he does like a monologue and it's usually kind of political based, some Americans, some Canadian, especially now. Okay. Um, so I would definitely suggest it over watching like whoever people are watching, Trevor Noah or whatever. It's, it's, a, it's not as shiny or whatever, but the jokes are better and the stuff yeah. is better. Um, but Lorenzo, who's the kind of producer, and so what they do is he'll do a monologue for 20 minutes and a half an hour maybe they'll do a bit and then they have a guest and they'll talk to and they'll just kind of talk on zoom for an hour or something and lorenzo is the producer and he does a 
uh, he was doing a movie watching thing here uh, where they would watch old comedies and see how it stands up today or just talk about it or, you know, like The Jerk or, I don't know, probably a Mel Brooks one or whatever, you know, something like that. And and uh, he's doing that online now. Uh, so okay. we're doing, we've been doing it with Mr. Show. I'm great. I'm, I'm grateful to be invited to it. Uh, I'm, yeah. Uh, so we'll watch, a bunch of us will watch it on Zoom and then we'll talk about it on Twitch. Okay. Um, so people are invited to do that. Uh, yeah. That's uh, and then uh, another podcast. Simon Simone Holder does a podcast called Shooting the Breeze, mm-hmm. and she talks to local people. I don't know if did I did checked it, it out. On? I don't know if this got cut off or where, but yeah. So she talks to local people, uh, a lot of local people, and it's kind of I don't know. It just feels more like a I don't know, just like a better comedy talks than just the same old L.A. comedy store, New York comedy seller, like just yeah. You know, you can, it's cool to hear com- big time comedians talk about stuff, but it's not as relatable sometimes. And so um, it's cool to hear more on a local level. Yeah. Um, he's sure. more, it's more human, I guess, or whatever. But it's funny and silly, too, and talks about. But that's uh, Shooting the Breeze with Simone Holder. Is, I did that one. Yeah, and yeah. I saw you on there. So she's cool. she- Simone's uh, she's doing great in Ottawa comedy and other places. And she's someone to look, look to. She's an Ottawa based comic, you said? Yeah. And then the tra- the embarrassing humans podcast, I was looking on it and the last upload was a year ago. So you were saying that they transferred what they're doing and now they have it just online on the, on the website and the Twitch platform. Is that where they transferred it to? Yeah, I think he's, he was just kind of um, trying to uh, figure out how to do because they were going like yeah. actually rent out a movie theater before and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so now he was trying to figure out how to do it online and stuff. So he'll, so, uh, so yeah, he kind of will shoot out a message to our friends and say, you know, message us if, uh, if you want to watch it with us. And then, um, and we'll do that on Zoom and then we'll uh, go on Twitch and talk about it for a couple hours and, okay. or an hour or something. And then I think he leaves it up on his Twitch channel, the Embarrassing Humans Twitch channel. So there should be some recent ones there. Okay, so that's I don't know if it's you, really I, podcasting right now or whatever. Like, I don't know if you can get it. I don't think you can get it in like on podcast places. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Twitch is where people should look out for that. It, the embarrassing humans uh, conversation. Yeah. Wicked. And you guys, said, you guys said you should watch that documentary or whatever too. Yeah. Or? Um, I checked it out, and I was actually going to back at the beginning of, of this conversation, kind of weasel my way in, and, and and I didn't get the chance. But something that really, really stuck out to me that was said in the documentary is that um, online comics, the rise of virtual comedy, is now being the great equalizer, and it's creating a whole new paradigm shift. Um, and allowing essentially it's kind of like the the elimination of the middle class <laughs> but with comedy where the the high I, I comics that are getting these 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 specials um, through means that aren't always accessible to every single comment and you know your local amateur night comics they're meeting in the middle it's equalizing um that's something that really stuck out to me and i just want to know your thoughts on that um well i think i think it's really it's really cool that like uh you can just um make your own specials and put them on youtube or spotify or yeah. that kind of stuff like uh, the diy stuff is awesome um but, it, but even people were doing that before though and so it's like that's how russell um um Peters that's 2005 he put his first thing on on YouTube and it it blew up and that's and so it's is it do you more so the pandemic is kind of shining a light more so on that and creating that that equalization yeah I guess because um we can't be in out, out there you know so we have to get people have to get their stuff out somehow I guess and so accessible um so we we're all, you know, I guess during panel, we're all sitting in front of here and people are trying to still get their names out and create. And, yeah. and especially these days with uh, just the way things work, so social media and 
and all that stuff or whatever. The Zoom shows are, are um, they're weird. They're, some of them are, are, are good and some of them are, you know, right. tougher or whatever, you know? So I, I think they're, I, I, I think that the, you know, they're a little divisive when you talk to comics, like um, some people will just go like, no, never, never doing it, hate it. And I get that. Um, but I also get the, the advantage of it. Like I, I, I see some really good comics who are just getting better on zoom and doing cool stuff. And they're just going to hit the ground running when this cat app or when we come out of this, if we do or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because all, though, oh, sorry. sorry, no, continue. I was just gonna say at all things you need to be adaptable uh really quick what's uh, can we plug the documentary we didn't mention the name oh sorry. yeah it was it's called um some friends of mine put it together uh scott brown and jf Fournette. um they're comedians local guys and local filmmakers um and they just kind of had an idea i guess to uh document comedy during covid so it's called like co i think it's called comedy 19 the last laugh yeah. And uh, they talk to people, um, you know, Canadian comedians and a lot of local Ottawa people um, and uh, just kind of how people are getting through it or what it means for it. And there, I think there was also a big part of it was kind of uh, to try and get comedy recognized like for grants and art as an art and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I don't know too much about that stuff or whatever, but uh it's a cool little documentary. It's on YouTube for free and it's not that long. It's like 50 minutes or something. And uh, yeah, I don't know, those guys did something. And it'll be a cool thing to look back on and, and watch or whatever. Sure. Time capsule. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a very cute collection and snippets of these um, really raw, visceral interviews. They feel really real. Um, and it's, it's well done. It's well done. So I think I'm actually, I think uh, we, we went up to Kingston at one point and we played a, uh, in October, I think it was like Tommy's. Is that a diner or something? Yeah, Tommy's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we did a we did a show at, at the Tommy's diner or whatever, and there's a little bit of that. Um, I love. Yeah, definitely. It promotes Kingston and um, th just the trying times. I'm sure, like every podcast now is about COVID nineteen. Like no matter what what the other topic or theme is, it's just everyone's going to be discussing how how it's affecting them. Personally, I'm over it. Same. <laughs> That's a hot take. I'm, I'm tired of hot this takes. coronavirus. Yeah. 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 Maybe if we say that enough, it'll just go away. If we think hard enough about it, it'll just vanish. Hey, you get out of here, coronavirus. Yeah. And <laughs> we're sick of you. Um the like comedians? Yeah. Like let's put you on the spot. Who who's your yeah. favorite? Who's an interesting <laughs> person? Um, I would say definitely uh Trevor Thompson. He's someone I would say uh, talk to him. He's he'll he has a lot to say. And he's good. He's one of my, the people I like to see. Um, also, the com comedians in Ottawa uh, like um, running, keeping it alive through all this, like running shows and stuff. There's like Dylan Parker, David Haddad, uh, Janelle Niles, who's cool. She start she's doing um, kind of like indigenous comedy and like uh, some mm. like theme nights. She would be someone really cool to talk to. Yeah. Um, Sophie Hayes, she's, uh, I think she's got a, a podcast and uh, she does some nice, Spence Charles. So yeah, all those people are really funny people and doing some, keeping it alive here and in the world, I guess. That's yeah. very helpful. I've been telling Adriana we should try to get the ghost of Muammar Gaddafi and she keeps turning me down. So I just, I'm happy we have some other options now. <laughs> but you need if we could only you know like i always said ouija board should come with a usb kind of thing you know so you could plug it in and do a zoom with Gaddafi. You know? <laughs> that's a great idea that's the way of the future <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's, that's really smart you actually, really you'll be that'll be breaking news if you score that one wow <laughs> And look out for the release of the comedy issue coming May 16th at 11 a.m. You can check it out at www.physiomag.ca. Keep an eye out for the next one because I can't wait. Until then, be good to one another.